he then goes into explaining the concept of you are who your father is when it comes to the, the, the lineage. Now, I find this interesting because Dr. Brown gives this to him very early on in the debate. He's like, if you want to track according to the father's lineage, I'm fine with that. There's no point of contention here for this particular debate. So I didn't understand why he felt the need to prove his point when the point is not being contested. I find that very interesting. I, I, I feel like, and I think it was very smart on Dr. Brown's um, thing to, by doing that, he kind of takes the win from the sales of his argument. Because he wanted, you know, like this is a, a real mainstay in their theology. And Dr. Brown's like, all right, cool, that's fine. So he's like, he, he feels, but he still feels the need to proof text this when it's not being contested. I don't know if you guys right. thought that. Yes. And I can say I didn't do like multiple deep sessions or anything like that where I was like breaking down all this secret information with Dr. Brown so he can be ready. Because <laughs> he kind of had it covered, you know. If he had a question, I would answer it. But it was like, you know, let him do his thing. But that was one thing we said, hey, just make sure you got a clear definition. Talk about what's a, you know, Israelite, what's a Jewish person that, and understand you'll be talking past each other if, if one person's using patrilineal and the other's right. using matrilineal. But he pretty much already even understood that and was like, okay. You know, so it wasn't it wasn't a big thing, but that was one thing I want to make sure. Otherwise, they would have been doing this, but right. it still appeared. Right, but so he's defending something he doesn't have to defend, which is he's wasting time now in his presentation. So that's one. But it also shows us the Isa Jesus he does in his proof text. Right. So, uh, Dean, you if you could be so kind to read from from this slide here. And and these were they which went up from Tal Mela, Tal Harsa, Cherub, Adin, and Immer, but they could not shew their father's house and their seed, whether they were of Israel. Right. So I mean, of course, that's the King James. So in the in the ESV, it says the following were those who came from Tel Mela, Tel was it Hasha, Cherub, Adan, and Immer. Though they could not prove their father's houses or their descent, whether they belonged to Israel, the sons of Delala, the sons of Tobiah, the sons of Nekoda, also of the sons of the priests, the sons of Habia, the sons of Hakos, the sons of Brazili, who had taken a wife and the daughters of Brazili, the, the gladiate, who was called by their name. Those sought their registration among those enrolled in the genealogies, but they were not found there. And so they were excluded from the priesthood as unclean. The governor told them that they were not to partake the most holy food until there should be a priest to consult the Urim and the Thummim. I find it interesting that he uses this proof text. Well, he uses a portion of this as a proof text. But if you go on, you see that what's interesting, the their fellow Israelites couldn't tell by looking at them if they were priests. They needed paperwork. Right. They needed paperwork. So I find it very interesting. Why, why would you? Well, he didn't share that part. Right. That it wasn't enough to look at someone and look at their phenotype to figure out whether or not they're from this particular tribe, if they're from the priesthood or not. They actually needed some kind of, you know, it says here the registration among those enrolled in the genealogies. But did he have that? Did he have the paperwork? You know what I mean? So I feel like that that this, this doesn't help the proof text here. If he was to read the, the, the entire passage, right? So that's that's one. Do you knew we could read this as well? And the son of an Israelitish woman whose father was an Egyptian went out among the children of Israel. And this son of the Israelitish woman and a man of Israel strove together in the camp. All right. So we're gonna do what we always do, right? Pause, look at the scripture mentioned, and we're going to read a little bit more to get more of the context of what's going on here. So Leviticus 24, starting in verse 10. Now an Israelite woman's son, whose father was an Egyptian, 
went out among the people of Israel. And the Israelite woman's son and the man of Israel fought in the camp. And the Israelite woman's son blasphemed the name and cursed. Then they brought him to Moses. His mother's name was Shelemith, the daughter of Debri uh, of the tribe of Dan. And they put him in custody till the will of the Lord should be clear to them. Then the Lord spoke to Moses saying, bring out the camp, bring out of the camp, the one who cursed and let all who heard him lay their hands on his head and let all the congregation stone him and speak to the people of Israel saying, whoever curses his God shall bear his sin. Whoever blasphemes the name of the Lord shall surely be put to death. All the congregation shall stone him. The sojourner as well as the native, when he blasphemes the name, shall be put to death. This doesn't help his proof here. I think what he's trying to infer is that because the son father wasn't an Israelite, he was stoned. But that's not the case here. Right. The, the problem isn't whether or not his lineage and, and his father's side was Israel or not. The issue was that he cursed God. That was the issue. Right. And, 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 and because of this incident, they set a precedent. Right. Whoever, whoever blasphemes the name of the Lord shall show to be put to death. All the congregation shall stone him, the sojourner as well as the native. When he, who's the he? The sojourner as well as the native. When he blasphemes the name, shall be put to death. This has nothing to do with whether or not this child's father was an Israelite or not. It also shows how the judgments are for both you know, the sojourner as well as the native, uh, that idea of one law for both, you see it right there, which sure. which you can't just have the judgments only. It's the good stuff, too, mm -hmm. you know, uh, wh whatever it is. And so, <clears throat> you know, that goes against, of course, the Hebrews-like thesis or right. the One West-style thesis, rather. Right. 